My name's Jason Newland. This is Let Me <laughs> Bore You to Sleep. Yep. Andre's in the background munching some of his dry food. He's had two packets of wet food today. One in the morning, one in the evening. And he's still eating. But the dry food's good because it helps clean his teeth. Also it's roughage, so... Well, you know. You know, roughage for... Oh, poo. You know, keep... It's, he needs it for his digestive system. And... Um, you know, roughage. <laughs> roughage. So, just to let you know if you want to support this free service. Uh, my PayPal account is paypal.me forward slash Jason Newland. And uh, Groovy, if you'd like to send a gift. Gift, 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 gift. So, if you changes have occurred over the last day um, I'm tired I was tired but at the same time so i got to be up early and it is early that's one of the downsides of being a night person is having an appointment during the day. Although it's rare, you know, this particular appointment's only every two weeks. And I could, I used to have it much later, but a couple of weeks ago I started sleeping at night again. But now I've kind of reverted back to sleeping during the day. So I made an appointment for tomorrow for... Um, when I said roughage I didn't expect him to uh, be using that roughage straight away but he is at least he's doing it on the paper which is good and yeah so I've, I've got an appointment in five and a half hours But it's okay, what I'll do is I'll go, I might get a cut of hours sleep. <sighs> I'll go there and I'll come back and go to bed. Andre, that was a weird... I don't want to be all graphic, but he just did a poo. And he turned round to look at it. But it was still attached to him. It just went flying. Just not across the room. It's not on the wall or anything, but... Um, he was so excited to see what he'd done. <laughs> it's, it's almost like he's giving himself a little present. Wow, I wonder what's come out of my bum now. Uh, same as every time, Andre. Honestly, he does a poo sometimes, and he looks at it, and he's like, like, as if it's like, what is that? <laughs> it's like, you've been doing it since you was a baby, surely. And he goes about, I don't know, seven, eight times a day, maybe more sometimes. Because his digestive system's very, well, he's little, isn't he? I think the little you are, the shorter the digest digestive track is. Digestive. Digress. Digestive. Digestive. Tract. Yeah, metabolism's quicker and all that stuff, so. Uh, yeah. Anyway, let's not focus on all that part of his body. He's got such a cute face. <laughs> that doesn't even make sense, but. Anyway. Yes, anyway. I could so easily fall asleep. 
which is weird because 15 minutes ago I wasn't even tired. I'll make me own mind up one day. Mind you, as Winston Churchill said, people that don't change their minds don't ever change anything. So I'm sticking with that. I watched that movie today, well, yesterday and today, and a half, half. Well, actually it's not. I watched the last 16 minutes today, and it's called The Darkest Hour. It's about Churchill and it's a really good movie. There's one bit in it, if you haven't seen it, um, it won't spoil the film anyway, but if you haven't seen it, I really recommend you watch it. Um, it's it's a fascinating film. Um, although I don't think, I think it was very cruel towards Chamberlain really painted Chamberlain in a in a very negative picture so I don't know much about uh, Chamberlain was the Prime Minister during just before Churchill and they didn't paint him in a very very fine light during the movie and then but there's one bit where Churchill's on the tube it's the underground um train it, it's like some you might call it the metro or the subway in like you know your country or whatever but that's the wrong term it should be called the tube which is because you know we invented them in England that's why we <laughs> <laughs> we we created the underground trains is that is that true I think it is true yeah, well, they've been there for about 200 years or something. Mind you, technically, we created most things, didn't we? we <laughs> maybe not. <laughs> so, anyway, Churchill gets onto the tube, the underground train, and he starts talking to the the common folk, you know, the the workers, the people that were they'd never really had any contact with before because he was born into privilege he was born into a wealthy family or whatever and he, you know, he had never never been on a tube train before and public transport wasn't really his thing and they, he started asking some questions and asking whether or not Britain should um, should give in to to the Nazis and should we surrender and all that stuff and I found it really emotional Andre stop that I found it very emotional even my bum's emotional and it's I won't go into details about the scene um, I won't mention the chocolate ice cream or that he's eating or I can't believe that he took his own B-Day on there with him but you know I'm not going to mention that and the, the acrobatics now that was surprising you know I didn't realise that Churchill was quite so uh, versatile physically it's almost like an elastic band in a chubby body. But forgetting that bit, so I don't want to spoil. I don't want to spoil the film. Um, I mean, it's a bit at the end, but again, I don't want to spoil it. But okay, spoiler alert. Um, we win. That's that's a spoiler. Sorry kind of spoils the whole film and um, that's why I don't normally watch war films because I want to watch a film and not know what happens at the end but with with you know those kinds of films or films based on true events 
that have been in the news maybe you know five years earlier or ten years earlier or twenty years so I was like oh okay I know what happens at the end uh, so yeah I don't generally watch films like that like films about Nixon or uh, the space uh, the first you know the on the moon travel stuff because I kind of can't know what happened well the end result I don't know everything but I've seen documentaries and I've seen interviews with people that have done it and were there and witnessed it and nah, nah, nah. a few Martians as well so I don't know what the Martians were doing on the moon I think they were on holiday it's like a it's a break like a little weekend break for them so I I would recommend watching it there's some funny bits but most of the funny bits are really Churchill his one liners outside of that it's not his wife's quite comical in a sense as well um yeah, outside of that, it's not... I mean, it's not really a comedy subject, is it? But Churchill was quite well known for being... having good one-liners. And what I quite liked about the film is... So I'm not a historian um, or a futurism. Um... I take much notice of now either the present but I I quite like the way that they mention how uh, how much of how much he had mistakes he'd made before becoming Prime Minister so instead of glamorising him as being this perfect hero who saves the country they kind of showed him uh, kind of they mentioned some of the uh, big faults that he had you know previously as a politician where he'd made lots of mistakes which caused a lot of problems and they focused on the fact that he wasn't very much liked by his own party which was uh, reminds me of a bit of Labour actually with Corbyn yeah anyway so I found it quite interesting I mean, as far as my favourite films this year, I would say Yesterday. It's probably my favourite film of the year. So check that one out. I watched that recently. It's a very feel-good movie. Um... Again, because it's not based on fact, I don't think. I won't spoil it, but I won't spoil the plot or anything, but it's, it's worth watching it. The thing is, with the trailers, they kind of, they spoil the, I mean, the whole premise of the film is based on the reason you'd want to watch it kind of you know but it would have been quite nice to not have known before watching it but it's very it's very well it's just it's really good because it's got the the bloke that we used to be in EastEnders 
He's a really good actor. He's very funny as well. Just he's just naturally, he's got that natural screen presence where he's funny, but without needing to try. Now that that makes sense. He's just. I mean, it's, you know, I hope he goes on to be a big star because he's really, really talented actor, and he's funny. He's just naturally got kind of a quite a miserable face, which is quite just funny. Um, yeah, but he's he's really it's one of my favourite films I've seen for a long time. What other films have I watched that I liked? I watched a film called The Mother. And it was one of the weirdest films I've seen for some time. And I watched the beginning of it a couple of times. I just thought, oh, I'm not sure about this. And then tonight I thought, oh, I'm not sure about this. But I watched it anyway. And it's, it's got what's her name from the games? Was it the cr- not the crying game? Um, you know the kids that she has a bar and arrow, a bow and arrow, and runs, gets put on an island and stuff and. The game, something games. I don't know. He kind of made her really famous, and she's. Oh, she also plays. She's in the X Men. Um, she plays the. What's her name? The blue. The blue girl in. Uh, the X Men. So she plays her. I think she's the highest paid actor in Hollywood, I think. I think she's the highest paid actor. Um, I think the the only person, or actress, because I think they do divide it up. And I think the highest paid actor is The Rock, I think, now. So I was really surprised because I've seen a few films by the with the rock in it. And I used to be a fan of his when he was a wrestler. Cause it was funny. And I didn't really I didn't really get into his films really, just didn't really bother. But he played um he did a film where he was with Kevin Hart where he's, he's like in the CIA and the premise of the film was he used to be really out of weight overweight like podgy and everything and Kevin Hart looked after him like once when he was being bullied or humiliated in front of everyone or whatever and then 20 years later they meet up again and uh, but The Rock is you know this big huge muscle man but it's funny he's really really funny in it it's very um, is that the one he's funny in yeah He's got, yeah, he's the one. It's, uh, I think he was quite good in Baywatch as well. But he's, I prefer when he's not taking himself seriously or when it's not a serious movie. I like it when he's, because some action people are not so great with comedy films I think a a big example of that would be Sylvester Stallone he tried his hand at comedy uh, comedy films and they just didn't really 
um, was it stop or my mum will shoot you or something that was one of them with the lady from the golden girls and maybe it's because of the kind of films that he's done was so extreme you know with Rambo and stuff that isn't it weird how you can like most people like actors who get typecast they get typecast in one like typecast usually is one character isn't it um, so if you keep like Harry Potter he hasn't been Harry Potter for what 10 years and he's still Harry Potter even though he plays other other films he's still going to be remembered for Harry Potter what other people have we got uh, I think James Bond can do that, can't it, to people? Like Sean Connery, Roger Moore, James Bond. Even though they did loads of films. Loads of films that had nothing to do with uh, running around as if they were 30 years younger. But they're still with that typecast as, as James Bond. them two more than anyone they're the, the two most famous aren't they and then what other films other actors got typecast yeah. well anyway with Sylvester Stallone he's been typecast but he's been typecasted in two different roles. Two completely different roles, but he's typecasted in those. Rambo and Rocky. Both of which, between them, is about 45 films. Yeah, he's type. Well, how many Rocky films are there? There's one. Rocky. Never call the first film one, do they? Rocky, Rocky 2 maybe we called it Rocky 1 have you noticed that I don't recall when Star Wars arrived the first time it was just called Star Wars The Empire Strikes Back was just called The Empire Strike Back. Strikes Back and not Clash of the Titans um, Return of the Jedi was just called Return of the Jedi and that was it three films that carried on from each other Star Trek what was it uh, not Star, <laughs> Star Trek um, Star Wars 1 Star Wars 2 Star Wars 3 Superman Superman 2 Superman 3 we shall not mention Superman 4. Never, ever. But Superman 1 wasn't called Superman 1. Why is that? If there's a 2, there must be a 1. If you look at an anthology, like books, so is that like book 1, book 2, book 3? Or if there's a TV show, episode one, episode two, it doesn't, doesn't go episode and then episode two, episode three. It has to be an episode one. Otherwise, how can there be an episode two? But Rambo and... Yeah, so Rocky one, Rocky two, Rocky three. So Rocky one was just him, wasn't it? And Adrian, Adrian, and going into the pet shop, telling jokes, and um, with his hat on, 
Hey Sean, you like to go out for a date with me? Yeah. Yeah. And so there's that. And he gets a chance at the World Heavyweight title. Um, not quite sure how it happened, but he did. And then the second one, he... has a rematch with uh, not Sparrow um, Apollo 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 Creed so had a, a rematch of Apollo Creed and they really wasn't really into that I liked it when they were friends Oh, the thing I did like at the end of that second one where they went and they're at the ring and they go ding ding pretend and they have like a little um, they have like a private fight you know in a ring in the gym and one of them goes like puts his hand goes ding ding and then uh, so Rocky 3 I like Rocky Free because it had uh, Mr. T in it. B.A. Baracus from the A-Team. I pity the fool. So he was on that. I like that. And although Apollo was, you know, he'd he was, you know, very muscular and fit, obviously, but when he fought Mr. T it looked like he was fighting someone that really re, you know basically you know he was Mr. T was known as being tough and from two angles like not I don't mean like looking at him from a hot air balloon and then another one from underneath a, a drain I don't mean like looking at him from different angles I mean looking at the situation he fitted the part of being a heavyweight champion Mr. T because he was big he was tough he was mean I mean but then a little bit of reality kicks in and the reality that Sylvester Stallone <laughs> would have run run away um, as soon as Mr. T got in the ring because I think most people would have done so you know but I know it's not it wasn't real eventually I found out it wasn't real and then the fourth film starts to get a little bit silly but I think the fourth film was possibly the most popular one out of all of them. It was really popular, the fourth one, I remember. And it had Dolph Lundgren in it. And it had Red Sonja, the uh, future wife of Sylvester. Although, Sylvester wow that's like a a Disney name isn't it like Donald Sylvester I thought I put I thought I thought I put he cat isn't that Sylvester I did I did I thought I put he cat yeah Sylvester when you say it like that Sylvester so if you say all in one go, Sylvester Stallone, it's like, yeah, great name, you know, but Sylvester, Sylvie Fest, ah, Sylvest, ah. It's almost like having a nice drink of tea.
but without the T, which wouldn't make sense. So yeah, that film was kind of clever in a sense of uh, like America against Russia kind of thing going on. It was almost uh, like a proxy war in a movie kind of thing going on. And of course America had to win because Rocky, although Rocky didn't always win, did he? He didn't win in the, the first film but he didn't win every fight in the second film and yeah but of course you know he won he wins sorry if I broke it well you know if you haven't seen it You've had uh, had about 25 years to watch the film. So you haven't seen it yet. And that's all I can say, really. I've kept it quiet for 20 odd years. Didn't want to spoil it or give any kind of spoilers. I have now so if you haven't seen it Rocky wins sorry the star of the movie wins sorry to break it to you that you know I'm sure we didn't expect that to happen what the star of the film is triumphant a film starring Saul Fester Stallone written by Sylvester yeah chances he's gonna win I think that film he was at his most muscular he really I think he kind of had to a little bit because Dolph Lundgren or Lof Lundgren whatever his name is it was a giant I mean it was absolutely huge compared to he was probably about six foot six. And I think Rocky's about five foot two. So there's a big difference in height. And I'm guessing probably weight as well. Because I don't think, wait, I might be wrong, but Rocky doesn't really look like a heavyweight. You'd think he'd probably be more like cruiserweight super middleweight you know possibly light heavyweight but not didn't, didn't, just doesn't look big enough to be heavyweight in the movies but I might be wrong apparently in one of the movies he actually I think it was I think it was going to be the Rocky 3 and before he got Mr. T to do it I might have this wrong but I'm making it all up as I go along anyway so it doesn't matter he actually asked a professional an ex-professional boxer like an ex an ex world champion, heavyweight champion, to play the part, <laughs> and uh, the boxer accidentally hit him, and that was the end of that. <laughs> he, uh, Sylvester changed his mind, and he decided to go with an actor. But he did come unstuck a little bit with Dolph Lundgren because Dolphy was a kickboxing champion and although he was you know, also an actor as well 
and he he did hurt Rocky well um so uh, a few times by accident so there's that film that's Rocky 4 see I like Rocky 5 and part of the reason I liked Rocky 5 was twofold really firstly it's It featured a real boxer, a Tommy Gunn, played by Tommy Morrison, who was who went on to be the world a world heavyweight champion, WBO world heavyweight champion in early nineties. So he had this like he was a heavyweight, he was huge. It's that's why you could see the difference. He was so much bigger than the Rocky, and he wasn't even. I suppose he was a big heavyweight. He just he was a heavyweight. Most heavyweights generally don't. They're not just above the weight, if that makes sense. So a heavyweight boxer, like with the lower weights. So if you've got uh, a middleweight and super middleweight. There might only be a few pounds between each weight, but if it's a world title fight, they have to stay within those pounds. Have to stay at a certain weight. With heavyweight, as soon as you you have to be above a certain amount to be heavyweight, and I'm not sure if it's 198. Is it 198 pounds, or. I don't know what it is, but it's something like 14, 14 half stone, or I don't know, whatever it is. But most heavyweights are a lot heavier than that. They'd be like 15, 16, 17, 18 stone. Because a lot of them, especially nowadays, are really tall. There's a lot of really tall heavyweights at the moment. There has been for a while. Um, I think it's one of those things, you know. It's, I guess, the younger people who are looking to, they kind of, they look at what is now. And they see the most successful boxers are the tall ones. So they think, oh, maybe I'll give it a go. But in the 80s, late 80s, a lot of people were watching Mike Tyson, who was a big stocky short man. And he was under six foot tall. And he was shorter than everyone he fought, pretty much. But quite a few short heavyweights came along after him. Because... They, they could see that you didn't have to be tall. I'm making that up, but uh, it's, it seems reasonable to me. So Rocky Five, Tommy Gunn gets trained by Rocky. So I don't think Rocky fights in that film at all. I don't think he does in the ring. But if he trains Rocky, he trains Tommy Gunn, and then, you know, then they get into a fight at the end, and Rocky wins, of course. So that's Rocky Five. Sorry if I spoil your fear, but you've had 20 years to, to watch that. Now that was the end of the Rocky films. So we thought. Since that, there's been. I'm gonna have to. Th I'm gonna have to really rack my brain now to remember how many there was. V 
there was Rocky, was it Balboa? I'm trying to, there's one where he's got his restaurant and there's a new heavyweight champion and they are comparing like the press are comparing the new heavyweight champion with Rocky like when he was younger and saying that they wouldn't he wouldn't stand a chance against the likes of Rocky so he gets called out and it's he has a like it's not a real fight it's supposed to be an exhibition fight which quite a few boxers have done Mike Tyson's done it in the past where he's done an exhibition and you know it's not supposed to be like full on well it starts off being an exhibition and the the champion says uh, I'll go easy with you uh, as long as you don't hit me too hard I won't hit you too hard and then he hits Rocky hard so Rocky hits him back hard and then he hits him back hard and Rocky gets hard and he's got a rock Rocky, Rocky he gets Rocky hard and you know there's a lot of hard rockiness rocking going on and uh, sort of the boxing kind of instead of being an exhibition it turns into an actual boxing match a proper one it's not supposed to I think it's I think it's for charity I think I don't know I can't remember what the other Rocky film is about though isn't it weird there was another Rocky film because there's two others so maybe that was the first one uh, yeah so that's Rocky 6 now I'm sure there's another Rocky one that I can't remember it might come to me but Rocky 7 there's been two ones where Uh, Rocky's became best friends with Apollo Creed so an Apollo Creed was no longer around Apollo Creed's son goes to Rocky and asks to be trained so Rocky trains him so that's Creed so it's not Rocky it's called Creed and Creed 2 which was the second one so that's eight Rocky films I'm sure there's another one but I can't remember what it is wasn't there one where he became a truck driver and he used to travel around doing arm wrestling contests that might be one of them the Rambo films of course the first one again first blood number one so that's that then Rambo two Rambo three So those those happened in the like eighties, nineties. I think he did a Rambo four 
and he's definitely done a recent Rambo like one that he did like literally this year or last year so there's at least five Rambo films so that's eight nine ten eleven twelve thirteen so he's had at least 13 films where he's played one or other of the characters at least 13 but then if you think about it what about Hugh Jackman Wolverine so you might say ah oh, but the greatest showman in the world or whatever greatest showman on Mars or I can't remember what it's called but no sorry mate Wolverine whenever I see Hugh Jackman in a movie even if he's singing and dancing I'm waiting for his claws to pop out of his hands and to go I'm Wolverine typecast sorry he is he's typecast but he's been in so many films as Wolverine he was in the X-Men 1 of course they didn't call it X-Men 1 did they just X-Men just shows you how unconfident they must have been in their you know, movie making they didn't believe that they, anyone would want to watch another one which is hard to believe when because when I saw the first X-Men film I couldn't believe said the word believe quite a lot it's a great movie at the time special effects it was it's kind of up there with the matrix you know as far as special effects goes so Wolverine and so the first one was X-Men X-Men 2 X-Men 3 which was a really weird film it's really good but yeah really weird at the same time worst beginning of any film um, you know it's, it's, but anyway but I did like it I did actually like it I just didn't like the beginning of the film then what do we have so those were the three of those then there was the Wolverine origin films so there was Wolverine where he's being made into Wolverine uh, there's the second one where he's in Japan then there's the th third one where he's looking after Xavier And he's got a daughter, I think, in that one. Then you got the X Men, um, again, X Men Origins, so X Men First Class or whatever. So in the first one. he only made a brief appearance in that one so he wasn't really a star he was just sitting at the bar um, but anyway he was in it and then the second X-Men Origins he goes back in time from the future to the past it's usually how going back in time works I think um, 
I'm not an expert, but I do recall something in that domain. So that so that's eight. And yeah, that, that's it. There's still eight movies. See, he, was, he wasn't in Phoenix. No, he wasn't in. F was he? Was he in Phoenix? No. No, he wasn't in Phoenix. So he was in eight. Played Wolverine eight times. Which is quite a lot. What other typecast? Peter Sellers, I'll always think of him as uh, Inspector Clouseau. I used to call him the Pink. I used to call him the Pink Panther. That's what I thought he was, because he was in a, a film called The Pink Panther. Even though I also used to watch the Pink Panther cartoon that had the Pink Panther. Do 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 do. No. Do 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 do. -do. The corridor, Pink Panther, the Pink Panther. He's a pink and everyone knows his name. He moves like a movie cat. A dee -de -dee -de -dee -de -dee -de 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 acrobat. You know he's a Pink Panther, Pink Panther. From the head, from from the head to his toes. It be the barrel where to do it. Who the original Panther Pink from head to toes? It be the one and only through the original. Panther, pink panther from head to toes. That's it. Pink panther. I oh, thank you. What other type casting was there? I don't know. I'm not sure. Oh, by the way, um. I should have mentioned this out of the beginning. I'm not on Facebook or Twitter or have any websites anymore. So I'm just on your podcast. Wherever you listen to me in the world, I'm on your podcast and I'm going to continue forever and ever and ever making podcasts, making these recordings and I updated my Spreaker account last week, I think it was, so that I now have unlimited storage. So I can have, I've already got 1,500 hours, I think, on there, already used up. So now I can have unlimited. So I put the price up, so I'm paying more monthly. But it's it means I don't have to delete anything and it can all be saved and it's be there forever and ever and ever. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, yeah. Forever and ever and ever, I tell you. Forever. I also got a new chair coming. Because the chair... The chair was already broken, the one I got, the big black squeaky chair. I put it together, but it's kind of hardly, you know, it's kind of, I'm sitting on it, it's uncomfortable now, and it's, it's not really working. So I got one on the catalogue online, so I didn't, I only had to pay about £60 out of my own money, and the rest was paid on account, like credit. 
the thing is, I got it over two hundred pound discounted, so it should have been over four hundred pound, and I got it for two hundred and twenty six pound with nineteen pound delivery. So I saved over two hundred pound on this chair, and it's another big black recliner chair, not like Lazy Boy or anything like that, because they're they're way 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 too expensive. But this is. It's leather, it's not fox leather, because obviously that, it's not, it's F-A-U-X. It's a fox, falx leather, so I don't know what animal that is, but that's that's what it's made of. And it's, uh, I just hope I can get it through the door. Because the way my flat is mapped out, it's only like as soon as you open the door it heads straight into the storage room you've got the width of the door and then the storage room's there and then there's there's a gap and stuff you can walk into the hallway but I actually when I first moved in here I contacted a charity my social worker gave me the number and they offered me some furniture like free which is amazing uh, so I got chest of drawers which I still got uh, a what's it a wardrobe which I still got but I'm going to give that away to someone so someone else can use it because Andre just keeps going in there and doing a wee. So it's, you know, I do, I, it is clean. I didn't sort of leave it. There's not a big puddle in there. But, and it, it just bangs the door <laughs> just to annoy me. So I had to put that in the storage room. And I've got racks on my wall where my clothes hang. So it's kind of keep everything off of the floor really as much as possible other than Andre's toys and then they gave me a settee it's a three seater settee, it was lovely it was could they get it through the door? nope he took the front door off of the hinges he took the front he took the door off the hinges of now wait a minute, he brought it in he could get it through a little bit, but he couldn't get it into the front room. So he took the bathroom door off and the living room door off. They could not get it in. There was like no way of getting it into the living room. See, on reflection, I probably should have just had it in the bedroom. Didn't even think about that. It was a really nice say, but my friend did give me one, uh, so I had this. I did have like a two seater say in here for a while, and Andre ruined it absolutely ruined it because uh, he was a baby when I got him. And Andre, not the settee, when, when I got Andre. He's mischievous now, but when he was little, he there was no stopping him. He ruined everything. He, he basically he made his own den inside the settee. He ripped through it, and he used to sleep inside the settee. I couldn't get to him. It store things in there: bits of food, bits of pizza, toys, socks, underpants. You name it, it store hide stuff in there so in the end um, I gave it away gave it to someone else who needed the settee I wonder if they found my underpants <laughs> so yeah so that that was alright um, but I've never I've never settee since 
was a little bit of a downer because I, I had a girlfriend recently for a little while uh, well for a day really or for about a week it's like like anyway I didn't have a set E for her to sit in or sit on which would have been much nicer than trying to balance on this chair um, it's really weird I had a girl I'm 49 I had a girlfriend for a week could say it was a very weak relationship Ooh. I remember once I remember when I was at school I had a girlfriend for about half an hour it was literally will you go out me yes and then half an hour later oh, I've got a new boyfriend oh, okay and like well you know it's like it was the quickest relationship in history I say history it was actually English but you know that was the lesson we were in Oh, it's pun time. Nothing better than a pun. <sighs> right, I want to go. So, there's no, there's no websites to follow, no Facebook or Twitter or social things or anything like that. I'll just post everything onto the podcasts. The home for my podcasts, the actual where they actually live, is on Spreaker. That's Spreaker.com. S P R E A K E R dot com. That's where all my updated podcasts are. Although, wherever you're listening, whether it's Spotify, iTunes, wherever it is they should just be automatically updated by the RSS feed so yeah baby so I'm going to go thank you very much for listening and remember to be kind to yourself or shall I do it as Churchill used to say remember to be kind to yourself because you deserve to be happy. Mmm. Now that was a good impression. Remember to be happy. I don't know if he growled. I think the growl was my own. I kind of added a growl. I don't know why. Why would I add a growl? It's a bit of a strange thing to do. Anyway, I'm going now. Speak to you later. <sighs> and I will be recording some Deep Sleep Whisper um, and some of the other podcasts as well in the next few days. Bye.